Rage on that beat, going crazy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Down the Stretch, the Solano Stallions podcast. My name is Carter Scott, coming to you pre-recorded from the passenger seat of my Toyota 4Runner. In a minute, we'll have Stallions guard Rodney Cook on the pod to talk about his youth coaching, his philosophy around that, and how it relates back to his game with the Stallions, as well as how you can get in touch with him to work on your own game. It's a great interview. He's a great guy, comes off really down to earth and motivated. Had a great time talking to Rodney. We'll start though with the fast break. We have four topics from around the world of sports to talk about today, and we'll put two minutes on the clock. That's 30 seconds each topic. First up, at the time of recording, it is game five of the NBA Finals. The Lakers are looking to finish off the underdog Miami Heat in five games. It's a miracle the Heat managed to get this far, if we're being honest. It's a great story. I want them to come back from 3-1 down, but I don't know how much they have left in them, though. And coming back from 3-1 down against this Lakers team is just a tough ask for anyone in the league, much less the Miami Heat, especially with LeBron looking as motivated as he is. To number two, the NBA Finals ratings are hitting a low point, not seen in a long time. And it's... uh. It's concerning for NBA fans all over and the NBA itself, obviously. There is a lot to this. There's a lot of cord cutting going on. A lot of people pirating the games because of not having cable. So it's something to pay attention to in future iterations of the NBA Finals. Depending on matchups, you never know. Next up, MLB playoffs are underway starting in the NL. The Braves defeated the Marlins in the NLDS to reach their first NLCS since 2001. Sad to see the Marlins go. Fish team good. They started with the bottom feeders, and they have a bright future ahead of them. The Dodgers sadly defeated the Slam Diego Padres. They also have a bright future ahead of them. Tatis, Machado, all those guys, they're going to be just fine. As usual, we want the Braves to beat the Dodgers in the NLCS. To the AL, the Rays and Yankees play Game 5 tonight. Deciding game between these two great teams. The Rays were the best team in baseball. The Yankees are pretty hot as well right now, though. Should be a great matchup. Um, As well as the Astros staying red hot, knocking off the Oakland Athletics. Everyone hates the Astros for cheating, and they deserve it. Now, though, they've got their swagger back. They're heading to another ALCS, and they are looking like one of the most dangerous teams in baseball. And that was the fast break. Now, let's get into our great interview with Rodney Cook, guard for the Stallions. Here he is. All right, we've got Solano County native Rodney Cook on the pod. First off, just talk a bit about your background and how you ended up finding and getting with the Stallions. Uh, with the background, you know, how I got to, to the Stallions, um, I actually wasn't, wasn't playing basketball for a while. I had stopped playing, you know, at Humboldt State I was doing, so I wasn't playing there anymore, and I was just coaching. And then Vallejo Greats put together a good, uh, uh, actually a good event. It was a Vallejo versus Fairfield event. You know, basically, you know, alumni that played, and I actually, you know, played pretty well in that. And actually, John and, you know, John and Dre, you know, gave me a contact, you know, and basically told me about the organization, and I was open. I was open for it. That's great. That's great. So um, when you were growing up, did you model your game after anyone? And do you kind of take that with you or do you model your game after someone new or do you kind of find your own find your own play style basically as you go along? Um, I, honestly, I don't think I really, you know, play like anyone. I, I've definitely got comparisons growing up like a Baron Davis when I was a little younger, a Darren Williams, you know, kind of crafty and, you know, below, below the rim, it could shoot it pretty well. But for me, Personally, I never really model my game after anybody, but I do watch a lot of point guards, you know, try to take little pieces mm-hmm. away from them. Like, my dad was big on, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. And, I mean, not Tim Hardaway Jr., Tim Hardaway Sr., my fault. Yeah. But he was big on him. And then myself, you know, I like Dame Lillard, uh, Kyrie Irving. So, I mean, I always, always watching basketball, student of the game, and taking little pieces, but I don't think I play exactly like him. So is there, any, is there any point guard today that you think is the best in the league and that you think – Really, kids should be watching, like you said, to become more of a student of the game and get better. Uh, well, Damian Lillard for sure right now is my top is my top point guard. Um, I mean, he's progressing every year as far as shooting percentage and things like that, and his 
he's doing a lot of things, you know, that's show, not showing up in the stat column, but, you know, showing up in the win column. So, mm -hmm. I mean, definitely a lot of kids should be looking at him for sure. So kind of going off that, I heard you do a lot of uh, youth training and coaching. Um, talk a little bit more about that and kind of what you get out of it. Uh, well, pretty much what I get out of it. Honestly, I, I don't really get too much out of it. I just like to see, you know, the kids, you know, smiling and seeing the results. But uh, I'm a part of Team Rampage uh, organization, Team Rampage AAU organization. Uh, we have 12 U all the way up to 17 U. Actually just got a kick back off uh, this past weekend. We were in uh, Idaho. Uh, we didn't, you know, didn't really come out on top like we hoped so, but everything was fine. And, you know, as far as the training, I'm always training. You know, lately, honestly, I haven't been training, sadly. Yeah. The kids, for some reason, haven't been hitting me. I'm I'm the type of trainer that's like, if you don't, if you hit me, we can work out. But if you don't hit me, then we're not going to work out because I don't know if you really want it or not, you know. These kids now, I've started started coaching these kids in like sixth grade. A lot of those are in high school now. So, mm. I mean, you're old. They're older. They're making their own decisions. You know, they'd rather do this or that other than basketball. So, when they hit me, you know, I'm all for it to work out and things. But if they're not hitting me, I'm not knocking on doors. I'm not calling parents to, to get them to work out or anything. I mean, it's their mm. career. That's what a good coach should be is, like, you're just kind of there to help them along. You shouldn't be the one driving them to it. They should have that own passion and drive. Is that what you would say? Right, right, right. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, they're watching all the guys on YouTube, the YouTube mm -hmm. sensations that they're watching, and I'm, I tell them all the time it doesn't happen overnight. So, I mean, you have to put the work in. And I do get a lot I – get, I get happy when I see kids that we actually work on things, and then two weeks later I see them in a live game situation and he's doing it. I might not say it to him or his parents, but I'm like, we worked on that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't really care for the pub. Like, no kid has to give me a shout-out. No kid has to give me anything. Kids and parents will tell you now – I. I should be charging. I really don't yeah. charge kids to come train. Honestly, I I get the happiness from having more than two kids at my workouts. That's 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 really where I'm at with it. But you know, I have a lot of things in the works. So training and you know, you know, charging kids and stuff like that will come about. But you know, that's just a little longer down the line. I mean, that's good. It's all. It's it sounds like it's all for the right reasons. Then it's it's about the mm -hmm. passion of the game and getting better, not about yeah. like oh, let me just get rich quick off of training these kids. You know. Nah. And then sadly, that's, you know, it's just a lot of things with the AAU world. I'm not really, I'm kind of slowing down on the coach at AAU, you know, and mainly because I want to coach, you know, at my alma mater, Jesse Bethel. I want to take that school over and get that, get my high school back to, you know, where we was back when I was there. But mm -hmm. the AAU circuit is just a lot of politics in it. A lot of parents and a lot of coaches are fighting over the same kids in the same community. And just a lot of he say, she say. And I mean, I'm not really into the AAU mm -hmm. scene like that right now, but. You know, right now I'm kind of just sitting back and just watching from a fan for the kids that I do work out and being able to go, you know, jot down what they need to work on and then go work on it after, you know, I'll see them in the live game situation. So you do you do hope to take that kind of one-on-one -on -one and one-on-two training skills and bring it into like a high school coaching role, right? Right, right. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much where I'm at. Just trying to, just trying to learn different ways because I plan on taking over Bethel within the next year or so. I mean, mm -hmm. they had a, just just recently had a coaching change and, you know, hopefully I can, you know, be ready to apply for that head coaching job next year. I'm going to be an assistant coach this year, but uh, hopefully, you know, take it over next year. So just trying to sit back and learn because, I mean, it's definitely different. High school basketball is different than, than mm -hmm. AAU basketball. So it's a lot of things that I need to learn before, you know, I get in that, in that high seat. Back to the Steins a little bit. Um, do you have, like, uh, do you set a personal goal for yourself every year, every, every new season? Do you kind of set yourself something different? And then do you, is that different from, like, an overall team goal that you end up setting? Uh, honestly, I really don't – I honestly don't have no individual goals like that. I mean, mm -hmm. my individual goal every single game is to do do whatever I can possible to, you know, make sure that we win. We want to be in the win column. I mean, mm -hmm. if that's me scoring 20 points this game or me having more assists this game, whatever it takes, that's – I really don't have no individual goals, you know, going into a season or even going into a game. I mean – I mean, you could say going into a game, I want to make sure I win my matchup. That's for sure. I want to make sure I win my battle. And then hopefully, you know, that results in a win. But anything for a win is where I'm at. Do you want to shout out your socials? Uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with you for training or if you want anyone to start following you, you want to shout that out right now? Uh, yeah, for my coaching page, uh, uh, Ready to Cook, uh, R-E-A-D-Y-2, -E the number two, Cook, my last name, C-O-O-K, -O 10. Uh, that's my coaching page for all training, you know, if anybody wants to come train or actually any kids that, you know, just interested, interested in trying out, you know, for Team Rampage or anything like that, uh, for sure follow me at, at that Instagram. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it.
All right, Rodney Cook, thanks so much for hopping on the pod this week. We appreciate having you on. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you again to Rodney Cook. I had a great time talking with him. Gave a lot of great insight into the mind of a player and what it takes to be a youth coach these days. Thanks to all of you who decided to come back and join us for episode two. Let us know what you guys want to hear on the pod, whether that be people you want interviewed or segments, or even if you want to come and join us here. Leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, and you can follow us and message us at Solano Stallions on all the social channels. We'd love to hear from everyone out there, and hopefully you decide to join us again next time, and if you do, we'll see you then.